good morning everyone and welcome Babs it's good to see you again I mean we've known each other for about 10 years uh, since we first met at, at Sarah's wedding um, and we've been in contact ever since and uh, it's good to see you this morning well we've known each other for longer than that haven't we since the um, academy days and the buddy club and all sorts of things like that and the optimism forum yes. oh yes yeah good old optimism forum yes the academy, academy. that was a long time ago now wasn't it the academy was responsible for a lot of us uh, connecting together in fact we still we're still stay in touch on uh, a regular basis indeed yes right okay now when it comes to a marketing strategy how how important is having a blog oh goodness it depends on whether you're going to use it or not really um okay you know, if if it can be useful to um so people get to know you and get to know your approach um, to things and everything. And also, of course, it adds fresh content to your website if you have it as part of your website. So that's um, always a good thing. Um, so it can be very powerful. But um, if it's something that you're not actually going to use and it ends up like my one, of, you know, well, OK, several of mine, um, where the last blog was about a year ago or the last blog post was about a year ago, then that can look a bit um, like you're not really in business anymore or something like that. So you do need yeah. to bear that in mind. Is it something that you will actually really want to do or can do? Um, and if it is, then yes, go for it, because um, it can be incredibly powerful. Right. So you, you can make it the, the centre of your activities, providing you're willing to put the time in. Absolutely. Yes. Um, it doesn't have to be horrendous. And once you get into a habit of it, I mean, if you're doing it regularly, then it just become, you know, it's like exercising a muscle, isn't it? That um, mm -hmm. you can just get um, you just get into get used to to doing it, you know, a little bit every day. Um, you don't have to write reams and reams of stuff, although, you know, they're saying now that um, apparently Google likes really long articles. But the thing is, most of us aren't going to be writing really long articles very often. Um, no. So I still think that, uh, you know, you can, you know, do short and sweet so long as you're to the point and uh, informative and that no. what you're providing is, a, is useful for people. Right. OK, so you, you don't blog about yourself all the time. You blog about things which were of interest to people who are listening to you yes indeed well if it's for business um you know you can also have a personal blog as well which um you can talk about anything you like i mean that was the original point of the blog was to actually you know be like an online diary um right. a, a web blog and um you know but if it is for business then yes you should be thinking about what other people would like to here what do they want to know about um and then you know share that you know share your point of view and what you think about it with them and then they get to know you and like you and do business with you hopefully if they want to okay i've lost you stephen can everybody else hear stephen or is it just me I'm going to unplug. Stephen, can you say something? Okay. And Mr. Raybold, behave yourself. Okay, I'm going to keep talking, I suppose. That's probably what I'm supposed to do. Um, <laughs> Well, I've known you nearly as long, um, Simon. He's another person, um, e Academy, from Academy days and everything that we've got to know. And there's um, quite, uh, it did um, build some very good positive um, relationships. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, well, thanks for dropping by, Simon, and uh, we'll catch up with you another time. Right. So. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll step in for now until until Stephen gets back. Um, yes, if if you're doing um, a business blog, then yes, you want to be as informative as you can. Um, um, but you know, there's no point waffling. You don't really want to waffle about things. Um, you want to um, 
really you know talk to people use your own voice and um just generally be you know use the language that the people that you want to read that you know use the language that they will understand and things like that so of course if we all if we all do if we all write as as we want to write then that's going to please different people you know different styles for different people kind of a thing so um, the thing to do is just try it out and see what happens um, see what people seem to respond best to and um, you know take it from there really if you're not sure about blogging yourself um, it's probably an idea to kind of just get you know do um, some guest posts somewhere or something like that um, the best place to host well there are one of the initially um, confusing things, potentially confusing things, is that there are two sorts of WordPress, and I use WordPress. Of course, there are other blogging platforms, but I think um, WordPress is pretty well known these days. And um, you can either, if if you're non, if you're having a personal blog that's something that's totally non-commercial then you can just have something that's free using wordpress.com. Um, but there are limitations to that. Um, but if it is just, a, you know, you don't want to do too much with it, you don't want to add lots of functions or anything like that, then pop it onto wordpress.com. If you want more control and to be able to advertise, and if it's for business, if you're selling anything at all, then you want to host WordPress yourself. And... Um, then, then you would, you know, you have to sort out some hosting um, on a good host, uh, which shouldn't be too horrendous. Um, you shouldn't have to pay too much. So, and you want your own domain name. So, all in all, about you know, under a hundred pounds, you can get a blog um, up and running and hosted and looked after, and that's you would pay your hundred pounds or so uh, each year, and that means you have full control over everything. You can, you know, you don't have other people's adverts on it or anything like that. It's just totally yours. OK, so that's actually um, very useful to know. Um, I look after uh, lots of people, you know, just some people ho um, with hosting, but um, it's not something I do um, big time. But I use uh, some guys called EPZ who are just their support is wonderful. Um, and we have Mr. Simon Raybould with us, a master of presentation. Hello, Babs. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you, my dear. How are you? Oh, good. You can hear me at least. It's just that Stephen's gone gone mute. It is. Okay. Yes, we've yep. lost. Stephen. Okay. I I can't stay for long, my dear. But I just wanted to pop in and ask one couple of really quick questions, and it's the really blindingly obvious one. Um, not to do with length of posts, to do with more frequency of posts because I'm really prolific one week and then maybe less prolific the next <laughs> month and then yada 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 and it kind of follows up with that is is there a, is there a best medium are you seeing people move away towards video blogs or something along those lines or is everything still written what's your what's your take on that well I kind of like blogs that are about five to six hundred words or so um, because that holds my attention for long enough. If it's much longer than that, it's got to be really, really good for me to be bothered to redo. We are so impatient these days. Um, you know, we, we don't want to hang around um, to read something that's 1,500 words long, which isn't that long, really. Um, but if it is well written, then, um, you know, you can read it in no time at all, and that's very useful. And now some are saying that actually that's what Google would prefer these days, something a bit longer than something short okay. and sweet so as I'm verbose, for, uh, I can write forever that's fine I, yeah, I can, I, I can. <laughs> uh, um, but what you can do is break something down perhaps if that's a bit too you know if you end up with like 3,000 words then you could split that in several blog posts if possible oh, good plan. Um, and as often as you can you can always schedule your posts so um, you can use um, a calendar function and actually plan ahead to, for some posts to go out uh, later on, you know, on times when you're not quite so prolific, shall we say. Um, I had a day the other day where I, I could have actually written all night or, you know, all through the night 
Um, I didn't because I'm too old for that these days. But anyway. And because you've grown up and you go to bed and get some sleep and things. And I, well, because I have to get up for children is really the main reason. That was, was saying, so having yeah. children was where it all went wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that. You're um, younger than mine. And all I've got to say to you in terms of, of, of this is honestly, but it just gets worse. I'm not. No, no. La, 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 la. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> However bad you think it is, it gets worse. <laughs> Well, they're nearly grown, so they'll be off soon, and then I can stay up all night blogging if I want to. Yeah, you think that. <laughs> anyway, as for doing videos, um, obviously, with the younger market, the younger people, they love videos. They're using videos and watching videos all the time. Um, I don't understand that because I can't be bothered with watching a video. Um, but more, lots of people are, so doing a video actually is going to become more important, I think. So, yes, you can actually have a video within your blog. Um, you could do things like you could just have photographs or you can you you can curate other content and just add a little note of your own um, that says, I really enjoyed reading this, especially such and such, and write your own comments upon on upon that and share it on your blog as well. Okay. So there's all kinds of ways that we can blog. That's interesting because that, that curation thing, that's something I do with my Facebook pages, my Presentations Genius Facebook page, for example. Mm -hmm. But it's not something I've thought of doing for my own blog. So that's a, that's a nice idea. Thank you, Babs. Okay. I set one up for somebody last year. Um, they're not using it too much, but it was really useful because he was all, you know, it's, it's something he, you know, he keeps an eye on everything um, within his industry, finds something useful and he wants to share it with readers of his blog so um who may not be following him on twitter or something yeah it's a good plan it's a good plan so, yeah, okay so. um babs i'd love to stay and chat Stephen. i hope you can find someone else to do the the, the chatting and stuff but i've got to leg it down the road because i'm doing a, a radio interview in an hour and a half and i need to get there and prep and all sorts of things so babs lovely to have a face-to-face -face conversation because we talk on skype by text quite a bit but it's it's just nice to hear. It is. It's lovely. I'm not sure we've ever talked actually. Probably like this. And I shall I shall watch the recording of this later on. So um, just carry on being useful. Take care. Thank you very much. Um, Lynn has asked something here about how important tags and meta tags are. Um, uh, I'll I'll address that later on if that's all right um, because they can be useful, but actually work on your content mainly primarily um, and what you call the. Um, uh, thing. Oh, sorry. no, Stephen's told me to answer this one now, so I'm going to answer this one now. Um, yes, I do, you know, include it, but um, important in what way? If you actually use the tags, um, do you mean um, tags as in like the topic of the posts or actual tags for a web page that you have? In which case, yes, you sort of want some of them in place, like the page title is still incredibly powerful and the description, which you want to set up because that can be what's displayed on a Google search. If it's something that, um, you know, is going to show up on a Google search, not everything is going to. But, it, you know, it's something bear in mind and, and incorporate it, but don't overstress about it. The point of actually having tags um, within a WordPress blog, um, a tag for those that don't use WordPress, um, it's something like a subcategory. Um, and it would be a way for your readers to more easily find the content. Um, so, you know, if it's going to be useful for people reading your blog, then, then do that. Um, OK, that's you're welcome. Um, as for selecting themes, free or not, now, oh, certainly when when I started off, um, we all used free themes because, you know, any of the premium themes were you know, really very, very expensive. And it's only after a few years of WordPress getting stuck in and us getting used to it and working with it that, um, you know, that became more of a thing. And we wanted to do it because, of course, it was a way people could... Um, take advantage of links and things on free themes um, but there's some really good ones and what i would do is if you're using wordpress then go through the wordpress site for themes the ones that you can find within your wordpress dashboard so have a look there 
personally, I always use pre premium themes so that I know it's supported. It's going to be supported, hopefully, for years to come. Um, so that it's uh, can be more, it should be more reliable. It's not just something somebody's thrown up, put out there, and then they're going to go and get a job and leave you to it, kind of thing. Um, I love using the Genesis themes from Studio Press because they've been around for years. They're not going away. They come up with new stuff all the time, and there's actually a really strong uh, community of WordPress, of uh, Studio Press, uh, and Genesis developers. Um, it's a very, very supportive group of of people. Um, we have our own Slack channel, which is where we can all sort of like share things and ask questions. And there's just a, a wealth of uh, support and information around. So, you know, really, I don't know of another premium theme, uh, which is a, a theme you pay for, um, that is providing that level of of support and community. So that's definitely I would I'm going to be sticking around sticking with that for a long time yet. Uh, plugins now plugins are um, functions extra functions for your blog uh, that provide all sorts of things from spam filtering. Um, I've got a post which um, covers all of these and it does need reviewing all the time to make sure you're using the best plugins for things because things do get dropped because a lot of these uh, certainly the free plugins um, the people are not being paid to support to support this and actually on Thursday it's actually thank your developer day um, within the WordPress community so I shall be promoting that and we can send them enough for a cup of coffee or something like that I think it's important to say, you know, thanks a lot because it saves you a, human, a, a, a tremendous amount of time and money. Um, but a uh, quick roundup. Yes, you want um, something that's going to filter your spam. You want something to back up your WordPress. Um, and for that, I use Updraft Plus. It's very reliable. And I know that the backups can be restored. And that's incredibly important to remember. You want some extra security um, because as WordPress is now used by millions and millions and millions of people, it's become a target for people to try and hack into. So you need some very basic security in place and add a plugin as well, such as WordFence, to just protect you because people will try to hack into it. Um, you know, the smallest blog is going to be a target. So but if you put something in place, you're going to be fine. And um, or what else? Well, it partly depends on what you want to do. You want something to help that people can share so they can share your blog posts, make it really easy for them to do that. Uh, you want something to perhaps um, get people's email addresses if you want to build a list to keep people um, updated with things. Uh, goodness, I'm, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I've got these standard ones that I just always um, install. Um, um, I do actually have them all on WordPress.com um, under the blog mistress uh, favourites thing. If I can share that sometime, then you can see the ones that I think, you know, I test it out and, you know, the, the spam filter that I use that I think is most reliable and everything at the moment. Um, things like that uh, it does need reviewing every now and then so why the blog mistress uh, many many years ago not when wordpress first came out but not too long after um, a few of us on from academy started playing with wordpress and to start with i didn't get on with it i thought oh no i don't like this but i kind of kept with it and and you know people kind of wanted stuff set up and this was before it was really used for websites. It was just for blogging. Um, and I set something up for uh, a friend of mine um, called Sue Butcher. And she called me her blog mistress to somebody. And I thought, oh, that's a good thing. And I've always hated the term web mistress because I've been doing websites since the turn of the century and, and before, but you know, not too long. Anyway. Um, so I've I never liked being called a webmistress, but blogmistress, I thought oh, I can have some fun with that. So 
I thought well, domain won't be available and it was so I registered that and off we went and it is really um, you know I use WordPress um, so it's not all blogs because you can use blogger and various other things um, but you don't really want to do that um, and so I, I have you know worked with that um, through the years um, and the point of the blog mistress is to help people get blogging and work with their blogging but also to help them maintain and build and create and support their blogs um, on WordPress. Uh, what are collaborative blogs? Now this is something that is one of the first things that we kind of um, that helped me to see the real potential with WordPress um, all those years ago and a few of us did get together and build a few things and it's where you can have if you don't want to um, run a blog just on your own, you can you can get together with a few other people um, who have the same uh, approach as you or even vastly different um, and you blog together. So you have this one blog um, and, you know, you have various people working within that. Um, so that's actually, you know, that, that can be a great thing. Um, I worked with Sarah on Birds on the Blog originally many years ago. And then from that, we developed a few others. Um, and I've taken over and now have blokes on the blog, um, which I haven't done anything with for quite a while because I need more blokes, basically. Um, but it's a great thing where, you know, people can, you know, you, you don't have to have the full pressure of, of blogging um, on your own. Um, um, blogging on your, I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted by questions and things and I must leave that to Stephen and behave and just focus. Um, so yes, I actually really love um, collaborative, you know, getting together with people and blogging um, and I'd like to do lots of them and I have got quite a few actually which I don't really do anything with because there isn't time. Um, but um, I, I will actually build them again because I've always thought it was you know, a really a very powerful thing because, you know, you could provide all kinds of aspects of, say, small business um, on the one blog. Um, and it can be useful for the people actually doing the blogging to raise their profile and share their approach to things. Um, moving over to web design. Um, now, all of the websites that I build are in WordPress. So, um, you know, it is sort of uh, does work together. Um, how important is mobile? That's becoming so important now. Your website has got to be responsive. It's got to be something that's going to look fine on an iPhone as well as it does on a computer and on a tablet or iPad or whatever. So you need to, you know, you really need to bear that in mind. There were actually less searches last year on computers. Um, you know, the, the number of actual searches on a desktop were down significantly, but we were all using these. We're actually starting to use this. Even I am. And I'm, you know, I don't know a tenth of what this thing does. So, um, you know, and especially with all these kids and everything coming along and growing up and becoming adults and using this Internet, um, they they just want to use their handheld device. Um, so, you know, it, it really is incredibly important. Um, if your website doesn't look good on a mobile, people just aren't going to bother looking at it. You know, they just won't even do, you know, even if you do, you can actually um, move things around. Um, just have it, you know, one of the things with WordPress is that actually if you're using a good theme, it's pretty much going to cover that for you anyway. So, um, but you do need to check and get other people to check as well. Um, SEO. Now, this is such a, a, a huge thing now, um, and it in, incorporates so many different aspects, um, social media. Um, basically, it's search engine optimization is about getting a good position on Google which is really quite a tricky thing to do now. You need to spend a lot of time um, to actually make that happen, unless you're in a very niche market. So if you are, then great, go for it. 
um, or if it's local, that's, you know, quite achievable. But um, basically, you want to help Google to find and other, other search engines are available. You, you want um, you want the search engines to, to be able to show your website as a result of what somebody's typed in to look for something particular. You know, they're looking for you. So you need to help the search engines know that you provide what that person's looking for. Um, and you can do that with, you know, various things, um, very sensible things. And that's where blogging can come in. It can, it's an easy way to add in some fresh content and um, and to show, you know, once you get people there, um, you can, you know, show who you are and, and what have you, as we've talked about before. Um, but of course, SEO incorporates all sorts of things, social media. Um, and various things. I mean, that's that can be more powerful now. Um, but indeed, yes, how else can you promote your site? Stephen asks. Um, if you write something well, then you and you share that um, where your audience is. And that's one of the things that you do need to understand is where is your audience who for years and years we've been told you need to understand your target market. Well, you you do you need to know where they are um if they use twitter then great then use twitter um but even so use twitter anyway because it is still powerful it's still used um it's not gone away um it is evolving um of course so you can't rely on it as and nothing else um because with all of these things you don't know what's going to happen to them so you need to keep a, a wider view um are your is your audience on Facebook? Um, are, are they on? You know, do they use Facebook? So that can be useful for you if that's where they are. Um, is what you do very visual? Um, in which case, can you share images and photographs um, on Pinterest, for instance, or provide images that people will want to pin and share and pass on? And then somebody that's had this passed on to will think, oh. I'm looking for that. Um, for instance, I saw something. Yes, I've got a, um, a blogging club on Facebook, and it's uh, with people of all you know, all different, all different people. And somebody shared something from LinkedIn on um, job creation. I think that was from or job finding a job, how to use LinkedIn or something like that. Um, and Lynn, one of the other members, she she shared this on there and somebody else said, oh, yes, I know somebody who's looking for a job and off they go. And that's that's how it goes. That's how it works, basically. Um, so th there are so many different ways to share these days that you kind of need to know what's going to work best for you. And, and, fo and focus on that rather than try and do everything, because, of course, you can't. Um, in the future, what am I up to in the future? Well, as my business is growing and everything, um, and rather than just working as Barbara Saul or the blog mistress, I'm actually going to put the blog mistress as doing WordPress support and blogging support and helping people with blogging. But I'm going to actually move the web design and the internet strategy um, work to a new agency. I'm going to grow into an agency um, called Nimble Digital because um one of the things we need to be these days because things change so much um look i mean we're on something called blab here which i don't know it wasn't here that many months ago um so um you need to be a bit nimble if you're using the internet to grow your business to um bring in business and customers and things you need to sort of know where where people are what they're looking at what they're playing with um and and keep an eye on things of course you know not everything is going to stick around some things will you know be here for a few months and then they'll go again um so you need to sort of keep an eye and that's going to be our job to sort of make sure that we know what's what um what's likely to be useful and who it's going to be useful for so um indeed things like websites the you know the websites by using wordpress we can actually that does enable us to and our clients to be more nimble. So you can, you know, 
bring something in and add it. Um, you can add a video. You can bring in extra sharing options um, and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be getting more nimble and helping other people to be more nimble and bringing in the various other people that we work with. Well, it's well, it's been um, I've got an awful dry throat now. Um, talking, I haven't talked this much for a long time. Um, it's been a, a great pleasure to um, to be blabbed. Thank you. What do we do now?